Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will go through the two acquisitions that was made by Kepler DC Read and Kepler Infrastructure Read. Both are bought from their sponsors, Kepler, and we will see if this acquisition is beneficial to the Read or the Business Trust. For Kepler DC Read and Kepler Infrastructure Trust, they tend to give up most of their income as dividend, and therefore, when it comes to acquiring assets, they will need funds. So the only way to get these funds is through taking on debts or from investors. Raising funds through investors can be done by issuing shares. However, this would mean that the current shareholders will have their shares being diluted. Therefore, it's very important that when REITs makes acquisition, it must be beneficial to shareholders through the increase in dividend even with the increase in the share units. So let's see how beneficial is these acquisitions to Kappa DC REIT and Kappa Infrastructure REIT. Kappa DC REIT will be acquiring two AI-ready data centers in Genting Lane from Kappa Joint Venture. They are essentially called KDC SGP 7 and 8. These two assets are fantastic. With AI developing and data centers being in demand, it will definitely benefit Kappa DC REIT. This will bring up their Singapore assets from 53.1% to 65.5%. They mentioned that it is expected to be DPU accretive post-acquisition and some people might be concerned with the additional fees required for the land lease extension. So the management have already stated out that even with the additional money required to be paid for the land lease extension, DPU can still go up by 8.1%. Moreover, this excludes the good rental reversions that they have been getting so far from their current leases. Another good point is that Singapore properties have reliable utility supplies. This allows Singapore data centers to support tenants and with 15 to 20% below rents, once they renew, it will be potential growth for income for Kepler DC. With the additional acquisitions and fundraising, it will help to bring down Kepler DC REIT's leverage ratio from 39.7% to 33.3%. This will allow Kepler DC REIT to have more flexible finances for future growth. The total cost of this acquisition will be 1.4 billion, with 985 million will be expected to be raised through private placement and preferential offering. Share prices offered to shareholders through this way will always have a discount and it will be advantageous for shareholders to buy at a cheaper price. For those who are not familiar with these two different programs, they are different because private placements are usually for institutional investors, while preferential offerings are open to all the retail investors like us. So far, private placement has already finished with 3.4 times oversubscribed. This is good because this shows the support Kappa DC Read has among institutional investors. Preferential offerings will undergo after these private placements. This will go through the brokers that you have invested in and for every 1,000 units, you will be entitled to buy 86 units. But if you hope to buy more at this discounted price, you can apply for excess shares and pray hard that these excess shares will be rewarded to you. This acquisition is very good because although there is share dilutions, it not only brings up Kappa DC Reads DPU, but it also brings down their leverage ratio. However, comparing to other REITs, Kappa DC REIT is definitely more richly priced, with lower dividend yield due to the higher share price. Next, we will go on to KIT's acquisition. KIT has finally received the PUB's approval to acquire Kappa Marina East desalination plant from their sponsor, Kappa. For those who are not familiar, it's Singapore's fourth desalination plant that was built by Kappa. It was an asset they have mentioned previously that it might be beneficial for KIT. Why is it beneficial for KIT? It's because there was a deal that even though Kappa is buying 50% of the assets from Kappa, the sponsor itself, they will receive 100% of the economic benefit of the asset. This asset will be purchased for 323 million with 288.2 million from senior debts and KIT taking on 35 million as loans. Benefit wise, with this purchase, it's expected to increase distributable income by 3.6%. Based on calculation, it's around 10.5 million. However, if the acquisition is 323 million, the return of equity will only be 3.33% annually. 
With this estimate, the amount of income that can be provided from this asset seems to be lower than expected. Hopefully, when we get to see the actual results, it will be better. With 10.5 million in distributable contribution, it will not have much changes to the DPO, which is very disappointing. Therefore, even though KIT has been aggressively acquiring new assets which increase their asset under management, it's important that these acquisitions are able to increase dividends for shareholders. At the current moment, Kappa DC REITs deal looks more attractive than compared to Kappa Infrastructure Trust deal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this short video brings about good insights into the recent acquisition made by Kappa DC REIT and Kappa Infrastructure REIT. Please support the channel by hitting the like, subscribe, and comment on what are your thoughts on this recent acquisition. You can also watch my previous video where I analyze on their recent results. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.